on the 12th day of October, Halloween gave to me 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests of miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swapping, 5 reeds of wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the, uh, what is this, the 12th day of October already? Well, that hardly seems right. Uh, so this is the 12th movie we'll be discussing here on the 31 Days of Halloween for Legion Podcasts. Uh, first of all, thank you for continuing to join me in this look at a, a bunch of movies that I have either not seen or really enjoy seeing. And this is a, a movie that falls into the former category. Uh, the film in question today is Eyes Without a Face, or if you are all French-like, uh, Les Yeux Sans Visage. And I have, uh, I've never seen it. Well, I have now, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it. But I hadn't seen it before now, and, uh, and boy, what a, a weird movie this one is. So, it's, uh, uh directed by a guy named Georges Franjou. Um, and it was based on a novel, as it happens, and then uh, uh, adapted by a guy named Pierre Boileau, um, and stars uh, as the uh, evil Dr. Genese, uh, Genesia, uh Pierre Brasseur. Um It's got uh, his pal Edna, uh, as played by Juliette Meniel. And uh, the the beautiful Louise, uh, as played by um, Alida Valli. So enough of torturing uh, my my backwards ass French. So what is the Eyes Without a Face? Uh, it's probably a movie you've seen the poster of or seen images from because it's got a great creepy mask uh, at work in it, which uh, I enjoy a whole lot. Um, and the, the all right. So the, the the premise of the movie is very much like uh, Pedro Almodovar's uh, uh, "The Skin I Live In." In fact, I'm pretty sure I I don't think that he directly credits "Eyes Without a Face," but boy, it's sure hard to imagine a world in which uh, "The Skin I Live In" exists in the way that it does without "Eyes Without a Face." Um. So, a doctor, uh, Dr. Genisier, um, he has a daughter who was in a, an accident and has been horribly disfigured. Um, and much like uh, uh, Benicio del Toro, no, not Benicio del Toro, Antonio Abenderes, uh, of course. Um Anyway, he, he, the, the two of them played doctors who had, uh, kids who got all fucked up. In this case, uh, the, the kid lives. They are both doctors who are somewhat obsessed with the idea of being able to transplant skin from one place to another, or one person to another, and, and have that be, um, have it take, you know, that the, the grafts take. But, uh, in this case, Dr. Uh, Genesier has not been successful. And so he ends up uh, kind of experimenting on his own time at his estate where he, with the assistance of his assistant Edna, uh, are um, basically kidnapping young women and keeping them uh, on the estate imprisoned and removing their faces uh, so hopefully, you know, he can fix his, his daughter's face. And uh, that's that's pretty cool. But what I really like about the movie, well, let's get into this, um, is that for a movie that was directed in, oh, geez, what was it, 1960, the same year as Psycho, and in a lot of ways feels transgressive in the way that Psycho feels uh, very transgressive. 
Um, th it's kind of gory in a way that I, I didn't really expect. There is an extended sequence where you see the surgery being performed to remove a woman's face. And in fairness, it, you know, these are special effects circa 1960, but they're pretty good and they're pretty graphic. Uh, again, for the time. I mean, these days, it's it's not reanimator or nothing, but uh, for the time that it was uh, filmed, it's certainly more graphic than Psycho is. Uh, and so they they finally find a good donor. <laughs> the, the, there's a great moment where the doctor uh, is, is talking to Edna and says, you know, the problem with uh, all these failed experiments so far is that I'm just not cutting enough of the face off. So next time, that's what we're going to do. And uh, and that's what he does. And it seems to work until it doesn't. And then there's a series of photographs that you see where the doctor is charting the rejection of this grafted skin, uh, which gets pretty gnarly. And also, I really enjoyed. And, <laughs> and uh, then there's a B-plot involving... The uh, the the daughter's you know fiance ex fiance who th and everyone thinks that this woman is dead and the idea is when the time comes that this actually works that this the skin grafting works they're going to be able to send her away let her have a good time you know sow her oats a little bit and when she comes back they're gonna have a new name for her and a new identity and she can go about her life and kind of reinvent herself in some ways but uh after the face doesn't work yeah the face on if you will this is sort of a, a reverse of face off um <laughs> i guess well no i guess it really is just a face off because we're we're swapping faces well not swapping them we're just taking uh taking a face off one poor lady and putting it on this daughter anyway doesn't matter uh the relationship between this film to face off is uh entirely incidental the skin i live in is the one that is a much more apt uh comparison at any rate so uh the doctor is a little frustrated and then the police who are investigating the disappearances of a couple of women they put the screws to this poor lady who got caught shoplifting and they originally let her go with kind of a warning just like hey don't be an idiot and shoplift because eventually you'll be prosecuted for this what happens is uh the, they call her back in and the police are like yeah 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 we made a mistake turns out you're gonna have to go to court and you're probably gonna go to jail uh for years unless you do us a little favor which is to go undercover at this doctor's uh the place of business the hospital that he, he's working in and while you're there we want you to dye your hair blonde and we just want you to go there and be pretty and see if anything untoward happens. And uh, sure enough, the doctor gets a look at her and is like, hey, her face is pretty good. I bet it would look great on my daughter. But the, ch the gig is that he doesn't just like steal women from the hospital. Uh, he waits until they leave. And when this girl is leaving, um, she gets uh, approached by Edna who says, hey, do you want to ride to the bus station? It's actually a, a distance away, and I can take you home. And so this poor girl gets in the car. One thing leads to another. She ends up chloroformed, and uh, and her, her face is going to be taken off. But the daughter finally has a bit of a crisis of conscience and ends up freeing this girl and also letting loose some dogs that kill the father. Um you know, basically laying waste to this estate and this horrible enterprise that's been going on. And the doctor has moments where he understands that what he's doing is wrong, but he loves his daughter and he'll do anything for her. So it's a real bummer uh, of, a, of an ending other than the fact that this, you know, girl in her creepy mask is surrounded by birds at the time you know uh one assumes symbolizing her freedom her being able to leave the cage 
and and so forth. Uh, although with no face, just with her uh, creepy mask, you do get to see her face in all its disfigured glory, and it's pretty good. And so, uh, what I'll say about Eyes Without a Face, it, it it kind of suffers from the same thing that a lot of you know sort of classic horror cinema does, which is just that hey, this is a movie that is you know sixty one years old. Uh, as, as we record this and thus is probably uh, I mean it just feels dated in a way that most of these movies feel dated I would argue Psycho does not but this kind of does and I, I think maybe part of it is the fact that it's a foreign film and so it moves at a different uh, not just a different pace but just in a different way than a lot of mainstream American films do. And I don't mean that's good or bad. I, I just mean it's different. Um, the one thing that really propels Eyes Without a Face, and and it's a movie that, like I, I talked about with um, one of the earlier selections, that I don't n necessarily think that it's a movie I'll go back to again and again, uh, like Carnival of, so of Souls, but it's a movie that I really enjoyed watching and at the end of it I was like huh okay I get it I understand why this is a classic and certainly why it was shocking at the time um less so now naturally but it was a movie that if if I put myself in the shoes of someone who uh was you know of cinema viewing age in 1960 that it would have it would have been a, a kind of a stunning film uh, for its graphic depiction of people's faces getting pulled off and whatnot. And, it, and it's clearly influential. I think Carpenter uh, referenced the this movie as being an inspiration for the mask used in Halloween. And what they did to that mask. The face, uh, as he was known in, in Halloween. Um, clearly, uh, as I said, the skin I live in is you know, was certainly tilling the same fields that eyes without a face is it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting movie. And one of those that if you're like myself and sort of want to have that broad experience of horror films where you not only have seen all the modern stuff, but you want to see the classic stuff because then when you're watching the modern stuff and it pays homage or makes a reference to the classics, you're like, Oh, Right, uh, like Eyes Without a Face or like Carnival of Souls. And and that's kind of the territory we're playing in with, with this uh, particular entry into the 31 Days of Horror. Um, I'm going to move to some modern stuff eventually, but this is not the last of the like classic series, if you want to call it that, from the 31 Days of Halloween. It's uh, one of the last... Of, of those classics but uh, there's one more that I feel like I need to see before we move on and then we're going to do uh, some more modern stuff but uh, Eyes Without a Face really good I, I gotta tell you uh, it, it's a movie that um, like I said I don't know that I'm going to go back to it anytime soon but having seen it it's, it's interesting to see or to reflect back and think about other movies that have, have borrowed uh, from some of its imagery and especially the, the girl in the mask. It, that's the thing. And, and it, and it's never not interesting in the movie. Every time she's on screen, you're like, that mask is really unsettling. So that's, uh, that's kind of what makes the movie cool. If not the most entertaining thing you ever saw. And, and at a brief 90 minutes, like you can make time for this just like I did. Uh, at any rate, I'm going to kind of wrap it up there because I don't have a ton more to say about Eyes Without a Face and I'm not going to make up a bunch of stuff. But I will say this. I'm very pleased uh, to be going through some of these movies to kind of filling uh, some of the gaps in my knowledge of horror films. That's one of the things that's fun about the 31 Days of Halloween is not not just to celebrate the movies that I know I love, but to kind of dip into the waters of, of these classic movies that I haven't seen that are well regarded and certainly influential on horror filmmakers uh, today and horror filmmakers that I love. Like again, you know, Carpenter 
names this as one of those movies that informs his sort of visual uh, vocabulary. And uh, and there's, you know, I don't know that I would watch this movie and think, oh, like a Carpenter film. But, you know, it's not that dissimilar uh, in, in terms of the way that the camera is largely very static and things like that. Um, so anyway, Eyes Without a Face, you ought to check it out. Uh, it, it's a it's a fun watch. Um, the movie does move along at a pretty decent pace. It's just it's just older, right? Like the performance is still, even though it's in a different language, they still feel very theatrical and that kind of thing. Uh, the the pre stellar Adler uh, kind of performances is how I like to think of it. Um, so anyway, uh, come tomorrow we've got a really interesting one that I'm looking forward to talking about with you. And, uh, and that's going to do it for this time. Uh, again, keep it spooky out there. We are not quite halfway through our journey of 31, uh, films for the Halloween season, but we're getting close and that, that bums me out a little bit. I, I'd like all of this to be year round, but also that means I would never do anything but watch movies and then record <laughs> these bits where I talk to you about watching these movies. So I uh, hope you're enjoying it. Please reach out. Uh, you can find me uh, on Legion Podcasts, uh, both on Facebook and Twitter. Um, you can also drop by the website, 